My name is Mary Decatur, and I am an application specialist here with X-Ray Incorporated. I work in our imaging and media team, and today I'm here to introduce you to our i1 Studio product. And on that note, let's go ahead and take a look. So today I'm happy to announce that i1 Studio has had an update and we've added a wonderful feature called Data Save Workflow. The Data Save Workflow is a feature that you're going to find as part of all of your printer calibration options, including color print, black and white print, and optimization profile. So in order to show you this option, we're gonna go right directly into the color print option within our workflow selector. So now that we've entered our color print profiling workflow, you'll notice that everything basically is going to look the same. However, we've added a checkbox here that says data save workflow. When we first open up the profiling process, our help file is gonna stay consistent with what you've already seen showing you the steps on how to build a profile. However, as soon as I click the button here and hover over it, those options now change. One thing that you will also want to take note of is you can actually pull this all the way over if you want to have full access to your entire screen. So now that we're in the data save workflow, you'll notice that the printer options are basically going to be the same. And you're going to have a couple things that will be highlighted in blue. And that basically is going to kind of walk you through the next step. So at this point, if I've already created my session and I've printed, the next button that would probably highlight at this point would be the next option. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use Luster as our paper type because that's what we've been using for this series. We already have the Epson Stylus Pro 7800 and the paper size, which is defaulting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to click on the Create Session option. As soon as you go to the Create Session option, you're going to notice that the software will automatically default directly to your desktop. What I recommend and what I've already done is created a folder called i1 Studio Test Charts. And that's basically going to be just a nice location where it's easy to access all the TIFF files that you've already generated. So once we have this location set, we're going to go ahead and give the paper a name, or the file a name, I should say. And I always use the name of the printer, the type of media, and then the date. That just makes it easy to locate. Whenever you save to a specific folder, you'll want to also note that the next time that you go to save, it's automatically going to default, and that folder will remain sticky as your last um, location to put those workflow tips. So now you'll notice that the Create Session is no longer highlighted, but my print option is. So at this point, this is where the Data Save feature becomes a little bit unique to the profiling process. So the Data Save workflow now becomes unique in the fact that it allows you to, again, print directly from the application, but there's additional options as well now. So what this feature now is going to give users the ability to do is one, they can print charts directly from either inside this application or they can just simply save this file as a TIFF and reopen them either through another application. Or they can also let them sit longer before printing to allow either additional dry time or longer for the inks to cure. They can also print multiple medias at the same time by simply building multiple test charts and then the last thing is it does, it gives users the ability to print directly through remote printers. So these two are some of my remote printers, but we also have simply named remote printer RGB or simply named remote printer CMYK. So moving along, I'm gonna go ahead and print this file and then we'll continue through our workflow. Now that we've printed out our test jar and we've come back, we're going to go back to the color print workflow and now you'll notice that both create session and load save session are available to us. At this point we already have printed out our test chart and we've created the session so now what I'm going to do is click the load save session option and here you'll see that it gives us the same name of the file that we generated. This is going to be 
the, the session name will automatically default to whatever you've named your TIFF file. This is also the best location to delete any session files. Simply deleting the TIFF files only removes the test charts. It doesn't actually remove the sessions. So you'll want to make sure that you're doing this so that it's a smooth deletion and that it's taking everything off the computer that needs to be removed. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and click on OK and load the highlighted say session and we'll continue profiling this media. As you notice, as soon as I did that, the software now went directly into the calibration option. That's because that was the next step within the workflow that needed to be completed. So we're going to go ahead and we'll finish calibrating our device. Once again, we're going to rotate the device into a seven o'clock position and either press the calibrate button on the side of the instrument or you can click the button that's on the software screen. Now you're going to see the message that this may take a few seconds for this to continue. And once it finishes, you'll be prompted to place the dial in the six o'clock or the measurement position so that we can begin measuring the columns within the test chart. Just like previously when we've created printer profiles, you're going to want to make sure that you have the instrument out of the pouch and we're going to place the optics beginning on the white of the paper, press the button of the device in, scroll through the row and ending back on the white of the paper once again. You're going to continue to do this through all five rows of the test chart until the entire test chart is measured and that's going to allow you to continue on to, the, to print out page two. One thing I do like to also point out to users, if you're using a media type that may be somewhat thin or you're worried about something from underneath the media coming through, it's not a bad idea to stack the paper um, and maybe put a couple of sheets of white paper underneath it. That will just ensure that you're getting good results from your measurements. So now that we've completed the measurements of page one, we're simply going to click on next. And at this point, our second test chart is going to be generated. This chart is going to be completely based on the measurement data from page one. Once the second test chart is generated, you'll see now the save session option is once again what's highlighted. Paper description is going to still remain luster. That's going to pull from what we've originally selected in the printer option. So go ahead and click on the save session option here. That's going to automatically save the TIFF file as well as your session, which now includes all of the measurement data from the first page of your test chart. So we can go ahead and click on next. Now we have the ability to print this or once again, we can simply close out the application and come back at a later time. So now that we've allowed the second page of our test chart to print out, we've already measured the first chart, we've saved our session for the first chart, we've gone through printing the second chart from another computer system, and now we want to go back and finish our profiling process. So we're going to first open up the software, which as you see, I already have the i1 Studio program open. We're going to go back to the color print option. What you'll notice here is that the data save workflow remains checked. Anytime that you are in a workflow where this box is turned on, that is going to remain turned on in all of your printer profile workflows, including color print, black and white print, as well as optimization. So now that we're going back to finish, instead of clicking on the create session, now we're going to select load saved session. This is going to open up to the various sessions that you'll have saved on your computer system. Once again, these files will be the same name that you gave the TIFF file that you created earlier. If you recall from our first part of our video, when we generated the first session, we named it Epson 7800 luster and then we place the date on the file name as well. Now once we click on the saved workflow and say OK, the software will automatically put us into the calibrate position so that we can continue moving forward. So we're going to once again calibrate the device. This will take a few moments and then as soon as that's completed it will prompt you to place the instrument back into the measurement position. Just a reminder, 
Again, I always recommend leaving the device out of the zippered pouch during the calibration and the measurement process as it's gonna allow you a lot more flexibility and not have quite so many errors or issues rotating the dial. So we're now back in the measurement position. You'll notice that we're on the second measurement step and this is now page, or excuse me, chart two, page one. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this the same way that we did the, with the previous page. If you go back to these additional steps, you'll notice that when we loaded that session file, all the measurements from our first test chart loaded along with that session. And now we can just go ahead and say next to scroll through these options. So now at this point, we're going to go ahead and measure page two the same way that we did with chart one. So we're going to go ahead and click the button, hold it, and release it ending on the white of the paper. So on row two, starting again on the white of the paper, pressing the button, and just continue through all the rows. One thing I will mention while we're measuring this is if you notice on the side of each test chart, the, the naming convention of the chart is going to be there. So for example, the chart that I'm measuring now does have the Epson Stylus Pro 7800 luster with today's date on it, and then it states that it is chart two, page one of one. This can be very helpful so that if you have a number of charts that are saved or printed that you're going to go back to, you can verify which chart is which. In the case that we're working on right now, what is happening is the name is such a long name, we don't actually show the full name. Part of that is narrowed down just because the resources, if you were to print that out as a four by six. So now we have the chart all measured. We're gonna go ahead and click on next. And just like we did before in the normal profiling process, we're going to give the file a name. We're gonna leave the same name that is actually automatically applying, which is pulling in the name of our printer, the type of media that we selected, along with today's date and timestamp. Once again, we have .icm for Windows system. If you're working on a Mac, this file format will be a .icc. Another feature that we've added in the most recent release is the ability to switch between version four and version two profiles. You'll notice that even though version four is the default, I tend to leave this at version two. Part of that is because it allows me to use my profiles with other applications that may have compatibility issues with version four, which is basically just a newer file format. Uh, so once you have these settings set up correctly, go ahead and click on the option to save profile. And once again, the bottom form here will show that the, the profile is now being generated and the ICC profile generation is in progress will show in the center of the window. And this could take just a couple of moments. So now that our profile's been generated, you'll see a window will pop up showing profiles created along with the name, and then just click OK. Now we'll have a green check mark that shows profile created successfully. The save profile option is now grayed out so that you don't get stuck in a rut of clicking that over and over again. So you can either go back if you wanted to make some type of changes to one of these steps, or you can click on the home option. Uh, Really at this point, there's not really anything further for us to do, so I'll go ahead and click on home. And I hope that this has been very helpful and have a wonderful day.